Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. If you haven't seen my face on this channel for a while, um, sorry about that work has been crazy busy. Um, so this video is um, a really fun one. Back, um, oh gosh, what month was it? The Practical Astronomy Show was earlier this year. And while I was there, on a spur of the moment, I ordered one of these guys. So it, it's an absolutely adorable little tabletop Dobsonian telescope. So it's a 60, uh, 76 millimeter diameter mirror. And obviously it's on a, a kind of Dobsonian mount that you can just put on a table. And I kind of bought this really not to do serious astronomy with. It's just adorable. It's kind of like a, a fancy executive table ornament really. But as I kind of, the moon's out, I can't walk all the way down the garden today kind of situation you can just take this outside and just point it at the moon and actually you can point it at Jupiter or um, kind of other brighter nebulae as well if you wanted to the beauty with all Dobsonian telescopes is that they are so easy to use and because they're a mirror telescope they can actually get quite a lot of light in there so this is, as I said, 76 millimeter diameter Dobsonian with a focal length of 300 mil. So although it's a, a bit of a chonk, it's kind of the equivalent view that you would get with a 300 mil zoom lens on a digital SLR. So I think it's super cute. It comes with two eyepieces. One of them is a 25 mil super wide angle and the view through this is amazing. Then there's also a, a 10 mil eyepiece. So I've done a bit of visual stuff on the moon and was really quite impressed by how good the view actually was. So a couple of weeks ago for a bit of fun, I thought, let's see if I can do any imaging with this. Now, obviously I'm not ever intending for this to become a serious imaging telescope, but you can put a digital SLR on here. So I thought I'd have a go at that. And you need a 2X bar low to focus as you do often with um, Dobsonians and it won't achieve focus with a 3x barlow so it has to be a 2x barlow that's the only option but for quick exposures of the moon the digital slr didn't do a bad job at all so obviously it's not tracking so you're going to have to kind of push it along to keep the moon in shot so i had a go at just kind of doing some images with a digital slr and then i thought let's stick the CMOS camera on here. Let's put the ASI 120 on here and see what happens. So that's what this video is about. So if you're interested in seeing what the images came out like, keep watching. Um, you may be a little bit surprised. I know I was. So yeah, super fun. Let's see how we get on. So it's the 22nd of May when I took these images. The moon was a 10% waxing crescent. So I started off by putting my Canon 1100D onto the telescope. And because that is an entry level camera, it's not very heavy. So there was absolutely no problem whatsoever in um, the, that telescope taking the weight. Now, the way that I attached the camera is the way that I would do with any other telescope, and that is using a T ring on the um, SLR and that had a nose piece that is an inch and a quarter in diameter and on the front of that I actually screwed on a 2x barlow which doubles the magnification and that will allow you to achieve focus so that is something that you have to do with um, our big Dobsonian telescope as well. I really didn't think the telescope would take the weight but it did there was absolutely no problem whatsoever and I actually used it and um, practicing this just on some trees and terrestrial objects and it did a pretty decent job so I wouldn't use it for that because it's a telescope obviously but um, it was really good fun to try that out um, so yeah that was the first thing I did and then I moved on to um, put in the CMOS camera on there So I've taken some pictures now with my digital SLR and just to see what happens I've put the ASI 120 on here. Now obviously this scope doesn't track so you're going to have to shove things along um, manually and you need a barlow on here to get focus. Because the chip is quite small or the sensor on that camera is quite small it means the moon fills the screen so I've turned the camera through 90 degrees more or less so that I can get more of the moon in and you can see how quickly it's drifting out of shot there. But I'm going to try just kind of doing a few different videos with a camera in different orientation, maybe keep the video size quite short 
because the software can align this stuff so I'm not concerned about it moving I've manually tracked objects in the field of view with our 10 inch Dobsonium before now it would be better if it was on a less wobbly table than it is on gravel <laughs> but um, this was a bit of a, a last minute test so I'm going to shoot some videos and uh, stack them just to see what we get out of this because if that works I can set this up literally outside the back door not have to worry about walking up the garden which with my mobility is sometimes too far for me to be able to do it weighs bugger all basically the camera here is really lightweight but I've just taken some pictures with my digital SLR on here and it took the weight fine so I took some raw files there to stack if this works it could be a very quick grab and go moon setup uh, I didn't buy this telescope to image with at all. I bought it because, first of all, it's just so adorable. Like, who wouldn't want this? Um, but also just for those times where you want a quick look through a, a telescope at the moon that gets you in closer than binoculars do. And this is ticking all of those boxes. This telescope, from what I've used on it so far, is amazing. Um, it really is so cool so I'm looking forward to seeing the results of this test and seeing if I actually get any decent images out of it I'm I'm happy if I don't get decent images out of it but if I do I think I'll be slightly shook but yeah I'm looking forward to this this is exciting So this is just one of the single shots that came off the digital SLR. So in total I took a hundred pictures and obviously I was going to stack them. You can do single shots and they work really well but to get a more detailed picture that's less noisy and has more detail we do image stacking. So the quality graph on this was pretty appalling and so I ended up only being able to stack 25% of those frames. Um, but you know th that is just how it goes with lunar imaging especially in twilight and given the fact that I just grabbed the telescope and put it outside. I didn't actually bother to let it cool down or anything, so it was kind of expected that this was going to be a little bit wobbly. So what I did, because the moon obviously is moving, I aligned everything using PIP. So you can centre and align the object in PIP, and then I stacked it. So this is just 25 images stacked, and it's it, the original image was kind of a little bit flat it didn't have a lot of dynamic range in it and I think that was down to me doing an incorrect exposure I think a lot slightly longer exposure would have worked better but I sharpened it using focus magic and then did a bit of processing using fast stone image viewer I actually tested stacking 30 images and 50 percent of sorry 30 percent of the images and then 50% of the images just to see what happened. When I looked at the quality graph, the quality plummeted after 20% of the frames. So 25% gave me the best result. And that's how stacking goes. If you put junk in, you get junk out. So you always look at the quality graph and just have a look how many images that it's best to stack. So although that is only 25 images, if you actually crop this and have a look at those craters, this is some really nice detail this is definitely kind of sharper detail than I've had in the past using my zoom lens and it's a similar focal length it's a 300 mil focal length but obviously I've got a Barlow here now so this is turning that into a 600 mil focal length so it's getting me in that little bit closer so I was really happy with this from the digital SLR especially given how few images I'd stacked so yeah I thought that was a pretty decent result and I know I can do better than this I can take more pictures, centre them and stack more of them to get a better image. So I know that that is possible and with that set up there's more chance of getting the whole disk of the moon in. 
This is a raw video that was taken with the ASI. I've debayered it in PIP just so that you can actually see what it looked like. So I'm going to replay this loop three times through. So I did a 400 frame video because that's about the limit of what I could do before the moon had kind of drifted off and would have meant bits were cropped off. Now if this was a whole moon image you would have to do a mosaic for sure because you wouldn't get it in. But with the camera orientated this way I was actually quite easy easily able to shoot a short enough video that I could actually put it straight into Autostacker and actually not have any problem whatsoever. So this is basically the stack and I was really really happy with this and that's unprocessed that is just a raw stack without any processing done whatsoever and already it's looking pretty decent so once I had that image again I took it into focus magic and just gave it a little bit of a denoise and a sharpen I love that tool for lunar sharpening and then once I'd done that I processed it in fast stone image viewer again so this is what the result looked like afterwards so this is Obviously, I've angled it around so it's pointing the way that it was when I was looking at the moon visually. You can really see there's way more detail. There's more dynamic range between the highlands and the maria. And when you look at the cropped image that zooms right in on those craters, I cannot believe this result, honestly. I think it is amazing for this tiny little telescope to be able to give me a result like this. Um, I love the ASI camera anyway for Luna. I think it's a brilliant camera for the money. And to just, like, just for fun, stick it on this telescope and see what happened. I honestly just want to get my pencils out and draw these craters because they look so, so beautiful. So, yeah, I honestly love these images and it's really good to know that this imaging setup is an option for me on the days where I need something that's really grab and go. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I've got some closing thoughts to share with you in a second but I'd be really interested to know what you think about these images. Okay, so you've seen the results. And as I said in the introduction, I'm never going to be using this as my imaging telescope. This is our seventh telescope. We've got an observatory and a permanent pier in our garden, so we don't need another imaging telescope. However, this is just one of those really fun things. Like, it's really small. You can just stick it on a table outside the back door when the moon's up. I'm actually going to also make a solar filter for this, a white light solar filter, because why not? Um, it would be a great grab and go quick image of the sun kind of situation. So I am so impressed with how this performed for imaging. It's not designed for imaging. It's not what I bought it for, but I'm a big believer in using what you have and not everyone can afford to buy a massive telescope mount and all the equipment that you often need to do serious astrophotography. So it's really good to know that you can just do some quick moonshots with this and actually get a, an okay result out of it. Um, I think I can get a better result with the digital SLR than I did on this particular night, but I am blown away by the quality of the images that came off the ASI. I mean, it's just mental. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I found this super, super interesting. So I hope you enjoyed it and that you feel inspired to have a go at this. If I can find it online, I will stick a link to this telescope in the description box below so you can check it out. I can't actually remember how much I, I paid for this, but um, it wasn't like mega expensive compared to a lot of telescopes. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.